Hi everyone, it's the 19th of March. Um, I hope that you're all well and all your loved ones are well. And the ones who are um, unwell, I wish everybody from the bottom of my heart Just interrupting my um, Pesach shopping and spring cleaning. Um, I gave a talk on Shabbos in a shawl and I thought that I could adapt it slightly for other people to listen to if you want to. And there's a handout with a source sheet. Um, I'm going to be referring to the story of uh, Pharaoh's daughter, Bas Paro, which is found in Shemos, Perak Base, chapter two. And it just is the Pesukim are just Posuk hey until Posuk Yud. That's all it is. Um, I'm going to hopefully uh, attach a source sheet if anybody wants to look at the sources themselves um, and I will follow the order of the sources that I gave. Um, I went a couple of weeks ago to the theatre to see The Prince of Egypt and I was thinking a lot about how it must have been like at that time and how it was like for, for Moshe to have grown up in the house of Egypt and it made me think a lot about Pesach. Um, and I just want to focus only on the daughter of Paro. And her story is told just in six Pesukim in Perak base of Shemos. Um, Perak Aleph recaps about the lives of the, of the um, Shvatim and that they died and that the Jewish people lived in Egypt and then Paro had to find a solution to what he called the Jewish problem, the problem of the multiplying Israelites and his solution was to throw the babies in the river and his solution was, the, was that because his, uh, the Medrash tells us that his astrologers had seen with their uh, uh, astrological powers that the saviour of the Jewish people would be um, come from the water. So he thought that, his, that if he throws the babies into the Paro thought that if he threw the babies into the water, he would, um, that would like resolve the problem and there would be no um, saviour for the Jewish people to come. So he decreed that all baby boys would be thrown into the river. So then we have the story of, we, they're unnamed in Perak base. It says, Vayelech ish me base Levi. There was a certain man from the house of Levi and he took uh, a daughter of that from the house of Levi, and the the Medrash tells us that these are um, Moshe's parents, the Amram and Yocheved, and after they separated, they rejoined, and then she became pregnant, and she had um, a son. Now uh, he doesn't yet get named. The person who in fact names him is Paro's daughter, as we will see. So here are the pesukim: Pasuk Hey, Vatered Bas Paro Lirchotz Al Hayar, Vanaharoseha Halchos Al Yad Hayar, Vatere Es Hateva Besuch Hasuf, Vatishlach Es Amasa Vatikacheha. Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside, and she saw the basket among the reeds, and she sent forth her, and I'm not going to translate this on purpose at the moment, she sent forth Amosa, her Amma, and she took it. Posuk Vov. Vatiftach, and she opened it. Vatireo es hayeled, and she saw the lad. So she saw the child, and behold, a lad was crying, and she had pity upon him. And she said, This is a Hebrew child. Um, this is Moshe's sister, who is Miriam, unnamed, standing at a distance to see what will happen to Moshe. El Basparo, to the daughter of Pharaoh. I can't even read my own small sheet. Uh, shall I call you um, uh, a, a woman from the Hebrews to nurse him? And she will, um, she will nurse the child. So there's a lot of midrashim here. Why it is so? First of all, the, um, the shechina was going to talk to Moshe's mouth was going to say the words of the shechina, deliver the words of the shechina. So it couldn't be that any Egyptian woman would be able to say, "Hey, guess what? I was the one who nursed baby Moshe." But it's also that um, a miracle was made that Moshe refused to nurse from any of the Egyptians. That's why they had to resort to going to the uh, Hebrew women. And Pasparo said, And the young maiden, that refers to Miriam again, went and and she called the mother of the child. Notice that there are no names in this little part of the story. And the daughter of Pharaoh said, Helichi es hayeled haze vaheni kihu li. Go and and take this child and nurse it for me. Vaani ev eten eten es harech, and I will give you money for it. Vatika ha isha hayeled vateni kihu, and she took and the and the woman took the child and she nursed it. Pasuk va ayud, um, verse ten. Vat vayikdal hayeled, and the child grew vatavi ehu levas paro, and she brought him to. 
the daughter of Pharaoh, Vatahi Lolaven, and it was to her as a son. Vatikrashamel Moshe, and she called his name Moshe. Vatome, and she said, Kimin Hamayim Meshi Sihu, because from the water I have brought him up. Um, I just noticed that all the Book of Shemos is called Shemos and the Sedra Shemos is called Shemos, yet here there are no names mentioned. And we don't even know what the name of the daughter of Paro is. There's lots of reasons why she was going down there. Either she was um, she was doing Tavila because she was um, trying to become Jewish, so that was part of her conversion process. Perhaps she had boils and she was trying to soothe herself and as soon as she touched the basket, she was saved. There's all lots of Midrashim like that. But she's walking along with her maidens and the Gemara in Sota says, starts, this is source seven, the, the Hanaro Seha, the women who were with her, said to her, when she wished, when she saw that she wished, when the, when the maiden saw that she wished to rescue Moshe, they said to her, your highness, it's customary in the world if a mortal king makes a ruling, even if the entire world doesn't obey the ruling, his children and members of his household follow it. Yet you are disobeying your own father's decree. So this is what the maiden said, and according to the Midrash, the angel Gavriel came and he sort of pushed them into the ground. So they got let, there, none of them were there. So either none of them were there or one of them was there because it wasn't fair to the Egyptian princess to be left without a maiden. Um, so now we're gonna look at the question I started off with right at the beginning, which was in Posuk um, He, which was Vatishlach Esamosa Vatikocheha. And she sent forth her Amma, whatever I call that, and she took it. And Rashi gives us two opinions what it could be she sent forth her Amma. So there are two words that Rashi suggests, and he gives two explanations, which probably means he's not so satisfied with either of them, or you need a combination of both. Es Shivchoscha, it could be in her maidservants, because Amma is another word for a female maidservant. Rabbi Senu Darshu and our rabbis tell us it could be Loshon Yod, an expression of a hand. So it could be that one of her maidservants, she sent her maidservant out, because it's ambiguous, the word Amma could be, like for example, you call something a measurement of something, because this is like an Amma, like for example, a foot. So we have that, let's say, when we talk about how high a sukkah should be or something like that. So um, the rabbis tell us that she either sent forth her maidservant, which is Amma, which is a one word of explaining the word Amma, or another word is a more midrashic interpretation would be she sent forth her hand, which could be if there were no maidservants left. Um, the Gemara in Sota is where Rashi gets this from, and it comes to tell us, um, it comes to teach us, Ha Ka Mashma, this is source nine, Lon De Ishtabav Ishtabuve. This comes to tell us that her own arm miraculously stretched. It was extended many arms length to enable her to reach the basket. So I think this is sort of reminds me of the Disney film, The Incredibles, where the mother is called Elastic Girl, where she can sort of be in the kitchen stirring soup with one hand and her other hand can sort of like stretch like completely in the other direction all the way up the stairs to get her baby out of the cot, which is sort of like, um, a metaphorical um, mum who's got more hands than, you know, more than two pairs, more than a pair of hands. She can manage to do more things. But here we have this idea. It's like, so I see this story as like the Elastic Girl person, the, the woman in the Elastic Girl, who, whose hand can miraculously reach things. Now, if, if the Medrash is telling us that her hand miraculously reached things, the Kotzka Rebbe asks a question. If she was standing on the riverside, and she could see this basket and it, she could see that the basket lay many arm's lengths away from her. Why did she even bother? Why did she bother to try and reach the basket? And the Kotzka tells us the following. Sometimes things seem impossible and very, very difficult, but all we need to do is reach out. We need to do something small and Hashem will help us with the rest of it. And I think that's particularly poignant at the moment None of us really know what's going on. I know we've got medical advice, but we've got to do small things. We've got to do whatever we can. We've got to isolate ourselves if that's what we have to do. We have to look after other people. We have to not stockpile. We have to make sure what we've, we've got what we need in our house. We have to remind people who are vulnerable to stay at home and try and keep our spirits up and try and keep our household together. And if you're alone, try and contact people as much as possible through the digital media that we have, the social media, WhatsApp groups, and also you can phone people. Just do small things and 
we're not we're not going to be able to solve the problem which is a world pandemic but we can do small things so even though things look like beyond our reach and how are we going to do anything here to help or just something just something to deliver milk to one of your neighbors if you've got enough of something offer it to someone else i'm on lots of different groups and i can see a tremendous kindness being done going back to a more um, rational approach about how she could manage to reach the basket when it leaned many arms length away from her but yet she tried and um, there could be an idea that midrashically her arms stretched or Hashem gave her the extra strength she needs. There is a concept um, which cannot be tested in a laboratory but has known to be many stories where people have been in emergency situations where perhaps due to a, an adrenaline rush um, someone has found untapped natural strength like supernatural strength within themselves to do something. For example if a parent saw their own child being trapped under a car or something like that they wouldn't know how they could possibly do it and it couldn't be recreated in laboratory conditions to help them see if they could ever lift a car again it's only under that immense stress they could display the hysterical strength if you want to on the sheet there's like an example of a news article about someone who lifted up a, a massively heavy car to save uh, to save someone else's life source 12 Moshe was given the name Moshe. Now there are different opinions and in Pasuk Yud we're told Vatik Roshimo Moshe. It could have been that his mother called him Moshe. It could have been that Bas Paro called him Moshe. But what we do know is the, 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 the Medrash tells us, source 12, Mikan shel gomle chasodim. From here we learn the reward, uh, the merit of those who are abundant in kindness. Even though Moshe had lots of names, and the Medrash tells us he had ten, and there's other, exa other examples what his name could have been. Avigdor, Tov, Levi, Avi Socho, Avi Gadar, lots of things. Lo nikra shem lo b'chol ha-Torah. Lo name is given to him in the whole Torah. Ela kamosha karoso bisyo bas paro. The only name given to him is the name that Bisyar Basparo, Bisyar Basyar Basparo gave him. Av hakodesh baruchu lo karahu b'shem acher. According to the opinions that Basparo gave him the name Moshe, because she said min hamai and mishi sihu, which has got the same sort of root mim shin. Um, some people say it's his mother, as I said, some people say it's, it's Basparo. And if it is because she says because I drew him out of the water, maybe it's an allegory because it's actually it's not passive, it is actually active. Perhaps it's an illusion, an oblique reference to the fact that in the future, Moshe Rabbeinu would be the one who would help Bnei Yisrael um, come out of Egypt and cross the Yom Suf to get to Matan Torah, which is obviously the objective of where we were hoping, we were, we were hoping, we were hoping and we're hoping to again come to some salvation very soon. Paro's daughter gets credited with, an using, with choosing the name for Moshe, according to most opinions, and no other name is called, Hashem only calls him Moshe because of the name that Paro's daughter gives him. The funny thing is that Paro's daughter isn't named at all in the actual verses. These are the only verses that she's even mentioned. And everywhere she's mentioned is she's called Bas Paro. But there is a verse in Divrei HaYomim, in Divrei HaYomim Aleph, Perik Dalad Posuk Yod Ches. And it says, Ve'ela b'nei bisya Bas Paro. And these are the names of the children of, of Bisya the daughter of Paro, Ashela Kach Mered, which Mered took. There's a medrash as to who that could be. It's probably Kolev. There's more midrashim about that for people who are interested. You can contact me, I can give you some more sources. So Paro's daughter gets called by Hashem, gets called Bisyo. We only get hinted at this in Divrei Hayomim. This is the only other place where Paro's daughter is mentioned. And the, the Medrash in Vayikra Rabbah, source 14 on your sheet, says, Omar la HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem says um, to her, um, Levisya, Bas Paro, to the daughter of Paro, Lo hayom Moshe Bincha. Moshe was not your son. Vekaroso Bincha. And he, you called him your son. You treated him like your son. You looked after him. You saved his life and you looked after him like your son. Af atlo biti, even though you are not my daughter, Fa'ani kore osach biti. I'm going to call you my daughter because the name Bas Yo Bis Yo comes from the word Bas daughter Yo Hashem. Paro's daughter, who did this, went against the decree her father gave, which the whole world knew about, saved um, Moshe Rabbeinu. 
with an act of kindness, which perhaps at the beginning seemed quite hard, seemed maybe impossible. Maybe it was easy. She just asked her servant to get the child, but she's credited with saving Moshe Rabbeinu. And according to one of the Medrashim, at least, that she gets the merit of being called Basya, that she gets called the daughter of God for doing something where she has done a kindness, where she has saved someone. She has done a gemilus chesed for somebody. I'll just go over what we've spoken about. The fact that Paro's daughter came down, she stretched her arm. It, it could be that she stretched the mesh, she sent out her maidservant or she stretched her arm. And there's a Gemara and Sota, Source 9, which tells us maybe if she did stretch her arm, it stretched many, many, many Amas to reach what she needs to reach. And the idea of the Kotzka Rebbe, who says, why did she even try if, it's, if it lay beyond her reach? And the idea for us that we should, even if some things are hard for us, do things that are perhaps out of our comfort zone. Certainly, I feel quite now out of my comfort zone. I'm sure a lot of you do too. We've got to find ways where we can do things, that we can behave like the daughter of Paro, that we would be worthy of being called Basya, the daughter of God. I hope everybody has finds the hysterical strength within them to do whatever they need to do to help themselves and to help their families. And in Yeret Hashem, we're going to come out, hopefully, as many people as possible, Unfortunately, we're all aware there have been some fatalities and unfortunately we're going to have to expect some more, but we've got to keep positive and we've got to think to ourselves, Moshe came out of this terrible, terrible darkness. Mitzar is the straits, dire straits. At the moment, I consider us to be in quite difficult situations. We have to be optimistic. The women were optimistic in Egypt. Paro's daughter, Sipora, she was, had optimism, Miriam had optimism, Yocheved, the midwives, who, 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 who the Medrash tells us could be, could be Miriam and Yocheved, they were all optimistic. Let us use the genetic makeup that these people have given us and be optimistic and be worthy of being called the daughters of God. Let us all behave in a way where we would do our best to save as many people as we can, to help as many people as we can, to do whatever we can, to keep positive, and we will be Zoha to our own Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim to get us out of this very difficult situation that we find ourselves in, that we will come out of this very narrow, constricting, difficult place, and we will come to our own Kriyas Yamsuf, and there will be some amazing Yoshua, and hopefully it will come speedily in our days, Bimherov Yomenu.